has moving Kyle Hayes to the forwards worked? Now he got a, he got his goal obviously in this game, but I don't think he set the game alight. He's been a man of the match in an All Ireland final at centre forward. We know he can play in the forwards, but I wonder number one, are they losing something from the half back line? You know, Dan Morris is a, a great player can play fullback. Obviously, Mike Case is very good at fullback also. But are they losing a little something by not having Kyle Hayes wing back? And he's also not looking overly comfortable in the full forward line or the forward line. Now, we know why it's happening and it'll possibly be just a temporary thing. But do you see that that's interrupting, you know, moving him out of there? Are they, are they robbing Peter to pay Paul in a couple of places? Yeah, a small bit. Like, with due respect to Dan Morris, he's just not going to offer the same attacking threat from wing back that that Kyle Hayes like when Kyle Hayes opens up there you're it's it's like Jack McCaffrey in full flow getting the ball he's your most dangerous attacker when he has when he has the ball and one of the players that opposition fear most and also he's been played inside and Kyle Hayes is a brilliant hurler but there was times yesterday you know yourself if you're playing in, inside like your touch has to be the best on the field like it does, because you, you get such little time on the ball. And there was a couple of times yesterday where he just dropped balls, fumbled balls, didn't get the first touch in. Like you play, say, Patrick Horgan at his pump inside. Like touch is like lightning. The ball is into, into his hand and it's over the bar. And the defender, like he doesn't know where to look. Tony Kelly was the same yesterday where two or three balls came in. Actually got three in a row from playoff, Sean Finn, and ca caused him serious bother when he was in there. But Hayes' first touch is not lightning like that. Um, and he doesn't look totally natural. Like, you'd, you'd, you'd probably think, you'd fancy your chances of spoiling him on a 50-50 ball if it comes in like that. Now, if he gets it in his hand, he'll just barrel through you and he's he's under pressure. I suppose, as you said, it's probably a needs must, but they've probably made the half-back line a little bit weaker as a result. I'd love to see Hayes out at centre forward, but with Galan not playing yesterday, I suppose they felt like they needed him in the full forward line. But it is Robin Peter to pay Paul a small bit. They'll be hoping, I'm sure, that they can get Peter Casey back to feature at some stage and obviously get Galan back, get Keane Lynch back. If everyone's when everyone's back, where does he play? Because is it too much of a departure to say that he could start an All Ireland semi final or final wing back having not played there? Well, to be fair, he played there only a couple of months ago in the league, so maybe it's not that big of a deal to make a big switch like that if everybody's back and everybody's fit. I think he will go back there because I don't think they're getting the most out of him there. And I think one of... I mean, it's amazing to think that one of Dan Morrissey or Mike Casey will lose out, but I think ultimately if they have everyone available, probably one of them will. Um, yeah, I mean, do you know what? I talked after the Tipperary game about how at times when you put enough pressure on Limerick, the, the skill sets, and I mean the, the ball striking, I think they're brilliant controllers of the ball. They do an awful lot so well, game plan, brilliant. But now and again, the striking breaks down when they're under pressure. We saw it in the Munster final last year. We saw it more recently, and that to me was proof that, yeah, this is confirmation that that does happen. And I think Claire did it as well. There was a few times that Lim Limerick players misstruck balls. There was one instance early in the first half where one player refused to shoot in his right passed it off to another player who looked really uncomfortable shooting on their right. I'm not trying to, I don't want to pick out any players per se, but I thought they were made to look uncomfortable. Again, they're down a couple of their most high quality players and maybe they come into the team and that's not as pronounced. But I thought, once again, the secret, like it is to any team really, you put enough pressure on and the same flow, the same ease of striking and knocking over scores won't be there because, I mean, they specialise at work the ball through the hands, obviously deliver when, when required to, they're brilliant at that, work the ball through the hands until someone is sprinting through around the 45 and they just tap over a simple score. Under pressure, it's not quite so simple. Yeah, funny that you should say that. Um, I thought it was a tactic that Tip used last week that they were happy enough to let certain players shoot or have the ball at different stages. And I thought that happened yesterday a couple of times as well, um, where Claire were happy enough for the ball to be in you know, certain players' hands from distance because they felt like they weren't going to hurt them. Or it was a 50-50 chance of a shot, whereas if Dermot Burns gets the ball, you know, it's probably a 90% chance of a score. So I do think that's something that potentially teams have cottoned on to. I 100% agree there. Just you mentioned about the intensity of the game. There was a couple of instances, like Peter Duggan probably didn't have his best game for Clare on the scoreboard. There was one stage in the 18th minute, though, where he loses his hurl and he just takes off like an absolute <laughs> lunatic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
yeah. after Barry Nash, like a lunatic. Like <laughs> he was putting so much effort into the sprint, it was amazing. And he got a hit that. in eventually, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he got a hit in yeah. and just kicked kicked the ball off. I thought that was brilliant. Uh, Willow Dunn, who got a couple of big turnovers, as is his wont, he got a couple yeah, exactly. of huge ones. Um, there was one on Ryan Taylor in the 39th minute in particular that that stood out, and Ryan Taylor. Struggled a small bit in around that middle third in the early yeah. stages. Thundered Losing into it. Yeah, mm. thundered into it in that in that last maybe 20, 25 minutes. But like it was kill or be killed out there. Like you just it was kill or be killed. And so a lot of lads were killed at different stages, but you just had to have such a cool head and never panic. And in fairness to like cornerbacks nowadays are not renowned for their coolness under pressure with the ball but there was a different stage yesterday where Paul Flanagan was just ultra cool on the ball they never panicked they never delivered a hundred yard ball really really cool and obviously it was the same the far end with Limerick I, and it, I was thinking you know, yesterday how much I admire uh, what Paul Flanagan is doing because for years I, I, I think he did have some injuries but yeah. you know to be that late in your career in an in inter-county sense you know late 20s and then all of a sudden to really firmly establish yourself in the last maybe year and a half. I think that's that's something, an example to any player about, you know, if you kind of feel like you have the stuff, keep going because it's never too late. Even um, Potty Fitzpatrick, I suppose, the guy who was playing wing back last year, the the very big tall guy, you know, he's another example that it can happen late in if you keep going. So I thought Paul Flanagan, part of a brilliant full back line for Clare, 